Have you seen the crazy prices that they're asking for hydraulic press brakes online? And wondered, could I build one myself? And if I do, is it worth the time and effort to do it? Well, in this video, I roll the dice again. Well, I'm about to go from ashy to classy. and put up my own money and time to figure that out so you don't have to. I got my design done in CAD. Now I'm gonna move on to loading these plates up onto the CNC plasma table to start getting them cut out. I ordered four half inch, five foot by 10 foot plates and a couple other plates just to have around. So when I nested it, Three should just do it, but I ordered an extra just in case. got my cut file here this is gonna be all the framework for the press and it all fits on one sheet got it nested on there what I'm gonna do first is cut these holes and then cut the frame and then cut the holes and cut the frame just to double check as I go that everything's right it's a lot of money wasted if it's not right I think this one sheet was uh, about 750 almost 800 dollars So those holes look like they cut pretty good these pieces are loose in there so that means it that's what i was looking for just to make sure it cut all the way through to the bottom and it did looks pretty clean might put a new set of tips on there and start the whole outside body of that piece and then just keep on rocking Okay, so I got everything cut out and labeled so I know what everything is. Plasma table did a pretty good job. Now I gotta pull all these out of here, which at a half inch, it's kind of a pain because when you start pulling them up, up out of here, there's slag on the bottom and sometimes they get caught. You gotta pound them out and it's a little bit of a wrestling match. And his name is John Cena! but we'll get it. Here's all the sides to the press. All six of them cut. So now I gotta flip these over, knock all the slag off, and then kind of deburr everything, all the edges. And then I can start uh, laminating these together. That's why I cut holes in some and some I didn't. 
uh, the ones without the holes are the outside that you see and then the ones with the holes are the ones that are going to be laminated so i'm actually going to put them together weld them up weld plug weld them up and then when i have you know three and three which is an inch and a half plate on each side then i'm going to weld the frame together so i have it as one frame that i can pull off of here then when i do the top and the bottom plantings i can bring this back in as one big frame set it in there prop it up and weld it in place So I got all the deburring done. What I'm doing now is lining them up. Um, this is L1, this is L2, this is L3. So this one will flip this way, lay on top of this one. And I'll plug weld these big one and a half inch holes right here all the way up and down and I'll clamp it down. And then I'll put this one on top of that one. What I'm gonna do is take this big sander that I got, kind of knock down all the all the surface rust and everything on there so when they go together there's nothing in between them Okay, so this is what I got done off camera. It's real boring stuff. Just got these two side rails completely plug welded out and I mocked them all up into a frame with the support structures and pulled them off the table as one. So now what I'm gonna do is work on cutting out the top and bottom plantains and I'm gonna get those plug welded all together over there on the table and then I'll pull all those off and then I'm gonna make the base and then attach the base sides to this while it's up in there so i have something to lift this from and i can lift this up and put it basically into the back side of the platens and then use one of my lifting tables to kind of hold it in place so now i'm going to work on cutting up the top platens out and getting those put in
Okay, so I got the top and bottom platens welded together. This is the bottom one. You see it's good spacing in between there for these dies to slide in there nice and tight. Real tight. <laughs> so now what I have to do is um, I go to the center and I mark every six inches and then I drill and tap a uh, quarter 20 holes to hold the dies in. And what I use this tap arm right here, if you guys haven't seen one of these, these are awesome. I did a whole video on, on this, if you guys wanna check it out. Really awesome tool. So now I'm gonna mark out my holes, drilling with my trusty Vivor magnetic drill press, and then tap them out. So I got the top and the bottom platens completed, got all the holes drilled and tapped, and now I got it fixtured down to the table so that the top and the bottom platens are exactly in line and stay level and flat with each other. So now what I'm gonna do is turn the frame upside down, grab it, bring it over, and put it down inside the platens. And I made these openings here a little bit wider than the actual keys that I made on the frame. So it gives me a little bit of wiggle room. So I know from welding the frame, it is a little bit uh, sucked in from the heat, maybe an eighth inch. So I will have to put it in there and then maybe get my port of power and spread that apart. But so then I'll get that in there, level that out, start welding that up. And then I'm gonna start building off my supports off of here um, that connect to the, fr to the frame. Okay, so I got the porta power in there. I spread the two parts apart here to get them in there. And that's way off. But I went off the measurements that I have in uh, my CAD file that I made. So I do look at this though. You can see, even though it's three plates since an inch and a half, it's still curved, maybe from um, you know cutting in a plasma table, even though I I clamp them down like this to make sure they're all flat and weld them together. I think an inch and a quarter, inch and a half will still bow out a little bit. So I think that's maybe what I got here. Um, so, but these are lined up right in the middle of those slots. So I have it balanced right here where I set the degree finder down here and then zeroed it and then put it up there and it's exactly zero. So I set it down on, on some shims and blocks. So I know that's level. I put a square right here. I know this is level through here. So now I'm just going to weld these in place and that's why I made these slots a little bit bigger so I can get a real good deep penetrating weld in there. So I'm going to weld those out and then I'm going to take measurements again from there to here and I'll probably end up cutting this bar out on the other side all together and then just welding the whole another bar in there. Okay so I got the top platen attached to the frame. I got it welded in the front and the back to hold it in place. It, everything's nice and level and square. So now what I'm doing is uh, the back, I guess, runner plate here that attaches the bottom platen to the press. Getting ready to weld these together. There's going to be three inside of there. They're going to be an inch a piece. I'm going to weld them together, stick them on here, three places, and then it flips over and it welds to the bottom platen. And this is how we get the C on the bottom from this shape right here.
So now that I have those tacked in there, what I have to do is flip it upside down, measure the bottom platen and attach it to the bottom platen. Just tack these in and then make sure everything clears between here and there. There should be some clearance in there. And then I actually have to drill the holes right here to mount the blocks that actually attach this to the frame. So I need to measure all that out, drill those holes too. But I can do that after it's attached and kind of moved around. All right, so what I got is my nylon pieces here that I'm gonna use for like the bushings for, basically I'm making this a linear rail. So the bottom platen right here will go up on here and it'll ride on this rail. And this two by two piece right here, two by two by quarter inch thick piece I had cut. And this will actually be the rail that it holds onto and rides on. So this will grab onto that piece and it'll hold this bottom platen in place and allow it to slide up and down. So what I'm getting ready to do right now is just line everything up. I made a mark right here. Um, and this is like 21 inches from the bottom. This is where the rail sits. And then this sits on top of this. And this is gonna give you my spacing. So then this is the big side piece that actually gets uh, holes in it halfway through and then bolts hold that so it allows it to slide up and down. And then here's one of the side pieces. Then here's the top piece. And then here's the top piece of steel. So you can kind of see when that goes on there, how that's gonna work. The nylon pieces just act as like wear resistance and then you can lubricate them and it'll help it slide up and down. So it looks like I gotta knock a little bit off this piece to get that flat. What I'm gonna do is clamp all this together and try to clamp it all this way. And then I'll weld this piece on and that's what's gonna hold this piece in place. Okay, so I got the linear rails tack welded onto the side of the frame, as you can see here. This one's tacked on. Same thing over here. This one's tacked on. What I have to do after this is I have to uh, drill all the holes. So I'll drill this, drill a hole here, drill and tap here. So this will this will mount into there. Same thing on the other side. I gotta drill those holes and tap holes in that. Then I'll drill and tap holes right here, three of them. And this will give me the adjustment this way so I can press in with set screws. And then this is actually backed off a little bit to about there. And I'll drill holes with set screws in there so I can also push down on that. So I have adjustment this way and this way with it. Now what I wanna do is weld the legs on the side. It's, it's a big frame that goes on there. It's like a big box. But I'm gonna weld just the sides on so that I can set it down on the ground with the forklift and then lift it up onto those legs and it'll give it support. Because without those legs, it's real top heavy in the front. It's just gonna wanna lay over. So I have those legs designed to where they, they actually come out. They go down and they come out past the table a little bit. So that'll give it support so it doesn't wanna lean this way. So now I'm gonna weld those legs up and get that mounted. Okay, so I got those leg pieces welded together. These are three half inch plates welded. That's an inch and a half. And then I did my measurements where I've got it set to go up to the front, marked it there. I've got them on this lift table. I'm gonna lift it up to where it needs to be, align it, clamp it, and then weld it all the way around, do both legs. And then we should be able to grab this thing off the table and set it on the ground.
So there it is, the frame and the top platen down on the ground. I can really envision it at this point. It's eight foot, so that's a pretty long press. Everything worked out pretty good. Got the feet on, the feet work great. There's no rocking, so I know I have, I know I have enough stability there so it won't fall over. And then, especially once I put the cross supports in there, it's gonna be super solid. And off camera, I did weld in these gussets right here because I was worried about the ends just not being straight. So while I had it on the table and everything was flat, I designed and welded these in just to be safe because this is a long press. And even though it's an inch and a half thick, you could still tend to get some warping. So that's about it for this video. I'll do another part to this where I finish it up. Make sure to be on the lookout for that. So I really appreciate everybody's support and comments on my last videos for the last couple months. It's really helped me out and it's really helping my channel grow. If you haven't seen my previous videos, go back through and check them out. I'll leave some links in the description below to some of the tools that I use too if you guys are interested. That also helps my channel out. And again, I can't thank you guys enough for watching because it really helps me stay motivated to make these videos. It's really hard to video and work at the same time. So I really appreciate it. See you on the next one.